On we go, and now we start the third unit in the course, beginning with multiplicative functions. But before we talk about multiplicative functions, we're going to define something called an arithmetic function. So a function is called arithmetic if its domain is the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth, and the codomain is any ring. Now, if the word ring is unfamiliar to you, don't worry about it. For us, the codomain is always going to be real numbers or integers, so pretty straightforward, and those are examples of rings. Okay, the only real notable condition here is that the domain is the positive integers. Okay, so an arithmetic function is called completely multiplicative if for any two elements of the domain, for any two positive integers, we have f of nm equals f of n f of n. This is really saying what we have is a multiplicative homomorphism, if that's a term you know. If it's not, don't worry. Okay, you can think of it instead as saying the function distributes over products. f of the product nm is the same thing as, is equal to, the product f of n times f of m. So here's a quick example. Both of the following functions are completely multiplicative, n squared and root n. And the proof is pretty straightforward. We need to prove something about any two elements of the domain. So pick any two elements, n and m, which are positive integers. Then both of the following are true. f of nm, well, the function f simply squares the input. So f of nm is nm squared. But nm squared is n squared m squared, while n squared was f of n and m squared is f of m. So overall, f of nm equals the product f of n, f of m. And similarly, g of nm is the square root of uh, nm. The square root distributes and you get g of n times g of m. So both of these satisfied the fact that we can distribute the function across a product with no issues. And in fact, for any real number, the function f of n equals n to the alpha is completely multiplicative, and the proof is exactly what's above. Powers distribute across products like that. So more talk about multiplicative functions. So completely multiplicative functions are actually not the most interesting for our purposes. What we are more interested in is something called a multiplicative function. Okay, given any two elements of the domain, m and n, if those two numbers are relatively prime, then you can distribute the function. If the two numbers are not relatively prime, maybe you can, maybe you can't, you just don't know. However, the definition multiplicative as opposed to completely multiplicative throws in this extra hypothesis. If the two input numbers are relatively prime, then you can do this distribution. So I just wanna stress for a multiplicative function, this distribution only has to occur when the two input numbers are relatively prime. If those two input numbers were not relatively prime, maybe it would distribute and maybe it wouldn't, but it wouldn't be relevant for the definition of multiplicative. Now, some sources are also going to require, in order to call a function multiplicative, that the function is not constantly zero. This is a very minor distinction and we haven't included it in our definition. The only distinction is that it will slightly change how certain theorems are phrased. So let's take a look at an example. So here's a function, f of n equals one. This is a completely multiplicative function. There's not a whole lot to prove here. So for any two positive integers, f of mn is one because f of anything is one. One is certainly equal to one times one and f of m was one and f of n is one. So hooray, f of n equals one is completely multiplicative. So let's take a look at another slightly more interesting example. So let's consider the function f so that f of one is one. If you plug in n equals one, you get out one. f of one is one. But for any other positive integer, f of n is zero. Well, this function is also completely multiplicative. So consider any two positive integers, m and n. It's possible that they were both equal to one. If m and n are both one, then f of m n is f of one because m and n are both one. So if m is one and n is one, m times n is one. f of one was one, one is equal to one times one. And since we assumed m and n were both one, f of m is one and f of n is one and everything checks out. But suppose one of the two numbers isn't one. 
possibly both. At least one of the two numbers is not equal to one. Well, since the domain is only positive integers, then if a single one of those numbers is not equal to one, the product is definitely not equal to one. In which case, the product mn isn't one, so f of that number is zero but at least one of the two numbers was not equal to one, meaning either f of n or f of m is also equal to zero. I don't necessarily know which one or possibly both, but definitely the product f of m times f of n is definitely equal to zero because one of those two values is. So in either case, f of m n worked out to be equal to f of m times f of n. Let's take a look at another example. The function f of n is constantly 2 is not completely multiplicative. So can we find a pair of numbers that violates the desired claim f of n m equals f of n f of m? Well, let's let m and n both equal 2 for the sake of argument. Well, n times m is therefore 4, so f of n m is f of 4, but the function f maps every positive integer to 2, so f of 4 is 2. On the other hand, f of n is 2 and f of m is 2. So f of n times f of m would be 2 times 2, which is 4. And overall, f of n m was 2, f of n f of m was 4, and those are definitely not the same output. But not only is this function not completely multiplicative, it's not multiplicative. The example we did above doesn't quite demonstrate that this function isn't multiplicative. Remember that for a function to be multiplicative as opposed to completely multiplicative, there's this extra hypothesis that the two input numbers must be relatively prime. We input m and n both equal to 2, and 2 and 2 are not relatively prime to each other. However, 2 and 3 are definitely relatively prime to each other, so let's let n equal 2 and m equal 3. Then f of n m would be f of 6, but f of anything is 2. On the other hand, f of n times f of m would be f of 2, f of 3. f maps everything to 2, so that's 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, which is not the same thing. So here is a pretty straightforward theorem we can establish about multiplicative functions. So the earlier example we just gave about the constant 2 function not being multiplicative will follow directly from this. If f is multiplicative and it's not constantly 0, then f of 1 has to equal 1. So since f isn't constantly 0, there is some input so that f of n is equal to 0. But then there are two things we can establish. The greatest common divisor of 1 and n is definitely equal to 1, regardless of what n is. So since 1 and n are relatively prime, and we assumed the function was multiplicative, f of 1 times n must distribute as f of 1 times f of n. 1 times n is definitely equal to n, so f of 1 times n on the left there is equal to f of n. Together, we get f of 1 times f of n, is equal to this, which was equal to f of n. So f of 1, f of n is equal to f of n. Now, since f of n wasn't equal to 0, the function wasn't constantly 0, so there was some value that wasn't equal to 0, then I can cancel it from both sides and conclude that f of 1 equals 1. Notice if f of n equals 0, f of 1 times 0 equals 0 would be true regardless of the value of f of 1. So we really needed that information that f of n was not 0 for some particular value of n. But we conclude that for any multiplicative function that isn't always 0, f of 1 must be 1. So in the previous example, since the function was always 2, f of 1 equals 2 immediately tells me the function is not multiplicative because f of 1 was not equal to 1. And that's really how we are going to be using this result. If you ever have f of 1 is not equal to 1, then the function cannot be multiplicative. Well, if we have some examples of multiplicative functions, how can we create new ones? Suppose we have two multiplicative functions f and g then f times g is a multiplicative function. f divided by g is also a multiplicative function provided that that denominator is never zero, otherwise it wouldn't exist. 
If f and g are completely multiplicative, then so is the composition f of g. If f is completely multiplicative, and then f of g is multiplicative. Notice in this phrasing here, f is completely multiplicative, g is multiplicative. And the composition is in this very specific order, that the outer function was the completely multiplicative one. And the resulting composition is not necessarily completely multiplicative, but it is multiplicative. If neither f nor g are constantly zero, then the sum of two multiplicative functions is definitely not multiplicative. If I have a constant which is not zero and not one, and the function f is not constantly zero, then the product f of n times the constant is also definitely not multiplicative. So the proofs are pretty straightforward. For the first one, suppose we input two relatively prime positive integers, m and n. Well, the product f times g just says do f of it times g of it. f was a multiplicative function, and m and n are a relatively prime. So f of m n is f of m f of n. g of m n is g of m g of n. Move some stuff around. f of m g of m, that's the same thing as f times g of m and f of n, g of n is the same thing as f times g of n. So overall, f times g of m n was f times g of m times f times g of n. So f times g is multiplicative. The second claim is basically the same as this one for the product, the proof is not substantially different. The third and fourth claims regarding if f and g are both completely multiplicative or if f is completely multiplicative and g is just multiplicative, we're not actually going to present the proof, they are fairly straightforward, but I do want to repeat that the claim in the fourth line is not that f composed with g is completely multiplicative, just that it is multiplicative. The last two claims follow quite quickly from the fact that on the previous slide we established if f is multiplicative and not constantly zero, then f of one must be one. So if both of these functions are multiplicative and not constantly zero, f of one must be one and g of one must be one. But then f plus g of one would be one plus one is two. And if f plus g of one is not equal to one, that function is not multiplicative. Similarly, if I take a function that's not constantly zero, but was assumed to be multiplicative, f of one has to equal one. Since c is not zero and not one, c times f of 1 is not equal to 1, and therefore this is not a multiplicative function. Also, since c isn't 0 and f wasn't always 0, this product is not always 0. And combined, we conclude that c times f is not multiplicative. Okay, so that's it for a quick introduction to multiplicative functions. Um, in the next uh, lecture, we will observe more properties and see more examples.